Okay, we're moving on with simplifying when there's more operations other than just adding or subtracting. So we have multiplication and division now. When we did multiplication and division of certs, did we need like certs? No. Same with algebra. In multiplication and addition, we don't need like terms. We can multiply any two terms together, or we can divide any two terms together. Is that clear? Yeah. All right, let's do multiplication. First of all, equals, because our second step is equal to the first. Now, we can only multiply numbers together. So, negative 5 times negative 3. What's 5 times 3? 15. 15. And a negative times a negative number becomes a positive answer. Now, we have how many different numbers, uh, letters we have? X and Y. Now, when we timesing pronumerals, the powers get added. You have done this as index laws last year, but I'll give you a quick recap. So basically, I have x times x squared times another x, don't I? If I'm going to expand it, can x squared be written as x times x? Yes. Yeah. So how many x's do I have now? Four. four. So can I write this as x to the power of four? Yes. Yeah. Or the shortcut is, you just add their powers. So one plus two plus one is four. four. Because when we're multiplying them that many times, however many times they're there, you just add them. So when letters are being multiplied, their powers get added. So x, what's the power of x here? 1. What's the power of x here? 2. What's the power of x here? 1. So how many x's will we have? 1 plus 2 plus 1? 4 or 5. Is that clear? Same with y. What's the power of y? 1. Here? Are they being multiplied? So how many do we have? 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you can either count how many you have or you can add the powers. Same thing. But do you understand where it comes from? Yeah. Thank you. Next one. Again, numbers with numbers. 3 times negative 2 is? Negative 6. Now, how many b's do we have? 1, 2, 3. So b to the power of? 3. 3. That's it. Make sense? Yes. Now, with division, it's the opposite. So again, I'm going to do the long way here and tell you why the powers get minus. And then we're just going to do the shortcut for the others. Is that clear? So, numbers with numbers. 18 and 3. Can they be simplified? Or in other terms, can we divide both top and bottom by a same number? Yes. So, what's the common factor? 3. three. three. Common factor of 3 and 18? Highest number that's common to both? 3. So, can I divide both of them by 3? 3 divided by 3? 18 divided by 3? So we have 6. Now, how many a's do we have on top? a squared. So can I write it as a times a? How many a's do I have in bot at bottom? 1. Now, can I divide both a and a by itself? So a divided by a is 1. a divided by a is 1. So you only left with 1 a, right? Yes. Or in the shortcut form, how many a's did you have here? 2. How many at the bottom? 1. Can you just say, power of this A, take, the, take away the power of the bottom? Do you yeah. get the same answer? Yeah. Yes. So when you're dividing polynomials, their powers get subtracted. When you're adding polynomials, their powers get added. So that's one way of doing it. Okay? So the answer would be 6A. Either way. You either do this method or that method. Same answer. Next one. Numbers, 3 and 12, what's the highest common factor of 3 and 4? Three. Three. 3. So 3 divided by itself? 1. 12 divided by 3? Now, this 1 is in the numerator and 4 is in the denominator. We must keep them as is. For some reason, people won't move this 4 on the top. I don't know why. So see, 1 is in the numerator, it remains there. Isn't 4 in the denominator? It remains there. Now, how many different letters do we have? A, B, and C. C. Let's deal with them one at a time. Power of A here? Two. two. One. A here? One. one. Are they being multiplied or divided? One. Divided. So what's two take away one? One. one. Power of B? One. B? One. What's one take away one? Zero. What's B to the power of one? 
Just this. Yeah. What's b to the power of zero? Yeah. Done. Nothing. Anything to the power of zero is one. B to the power of zero is one. C to the power of zero is one. Two to the power of zero is one. Ten to the power of zero is one. one. Three to the power of zero? One. B to the power of zero? One. C to the power of zero? One. Z to the power of zero? One. U to the power of zero? One. one. So it doesn't matter what it is, anything to the power of zero is one. And we, when we talk about index laws again, I'll go into detail why. We don't have time for that today. Eyes on the board, stop talking. So basically, you can just say there was one B at the top, one at the bottom. Can we just cancel them? Then C, there's nothing else. Now let's write in a pretty fashion. A, C. Again, be mindful, this 4 is in the denominator, it, will, it won't go up for some reason. A and C, are they in the denominator or numerator? numerator? Numerator, so make sure you write it this way. If you write it this way, that's wrong. Okay? So, another way of doing it is, let's try and do it another way. A squared B, C and A, B. If you don't want to, what was it? A, B? Okay. Another method that you can use is how many A's are on the top? Two. How many are at the bottom? One. one. So you can cancel one. So if you've cancelled one, doesn't one A remain on the top? Because there's one more. Yes. Then you want to cancel B's. How many on top? One. How many at the bottom? One. So do they can get cancelled? Yes. C. There's none at the bottom. So how many? Just one. one. So you can write it as so what remains in the numerator? One. one. A. C. And on the bottom there is four. That's it. So you can kind of do this without thinking about the index laws and why that happens. Next one, division question. The first thing you do is you write it as a fraction. So this is your numerator, A, B, C, D, divided by the whole thing, negative two A, B, C squared, your denominator. Negative and negative, Two numbers, negative numbers divided gives you a positive answer. Now, is there another number in the numerator? No. So can I just leave two in the denominator? Yes. How many A's? One. How many A's? One. So they get cancelled? How many B's? B? Can they get cancelled? Now, you have one C in the numerator, but two in the denominator. How many can you cancel? What's the minimum number of C's? One. So can you cancel this one C with one here? Yes. And then you have to this one. Yes, we are left with one C, but where? Where was that extra C in the numerator or denominator? Denominator. Well done. In the denominator. And that's important. Because you had one on top, two at the bottom. So the bottom one has one left over. Then D. Is there anything to cancel D with? No. So do I need to write 1D over 2C? No. So it's D over 2C. So the thing to remember is the most common mistake people make is they swap things around. For some reason the D will come down or C will come up. Wherever a number is, it remains there. And C, there were more C's at the bottom and only one at the top, so one remains at the bottom. Does that make sense? You don't shift around things because you feel like it. That's something to be mindful of. So we will practice more questions next lesson. This is it for today.